Hi everyone, welcome back to Wigan with Christy. I'm Christy. Today I'm doing a continuation video for my Tummy Tucks Journey series. And today I'm talking about 10 things you need to know before you have a tummy tuck and a muscle repair surgery. Now I get asked a lot, um, did you have a tummy tuck? Did you have muscle repair? Now I titled my series, my tummy tuck journey, but yes, I had muscle repairs. So that's all a part of that journey. I also had lipo and stubborn fat areas. If you're new to my channel, you might not know, but I have lost since my highest weight over 160 pounds. So I had stubborn fat areas where it was like lumpy. And so like my doctor said, I even had like a Coke size, like back here, just weird fat. Didn't know that. But so he lipoed in a few areas like that. He did, he did a tummy tuck, extend it fully, extend a tummy tuck all the way down. And then he did muscle repair, which muscle repair hurts the worst. I've had two C-sections before and I don't hurt in my incision at all. I'm numb down there. You're going to be numb. Mainly I hurt for my abs and I found out if you didn't watch yet my one month update video You're gonna want to watch that but my, my doctor in my appointment says how my He says I was a foot apart, but he was kind of holding up like this many inches So who knows but it looks like my abs are like way over here and he had to bring them all the way and tie them in here So no wonder I still hurt in fact yesterday. I got up from the couch too soon and like I kind of went a little bit quick because my mom was here and I pulled like this muscle right in here on this uh, left side of my abs and oh man, it hurt the rest of the day. So I definitely, I'm like, I'm like, I'm more like nervous all the time. Like I'm pulling a stitch, you know, um, I'll like make jokes with my husband, like, oh my God, I busted a stitch. <laughs> or if I'm laughing or sneezing or anything like that, I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels like that, but it really feels like that when you get the muscle repair. That I believe is the most painful of this entire journey. Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you about the 10 things you need to know before you have a tummy tuck and a muscle repair journey, okay? One, most important, I've talked about this in my videos, you need 24-7 support for at least seven days. For sure, at least four days, 24-7, okay? I had with someone with me, actually it was on day three, I was by myself for like an hour until uh, my cousin came to sit with me while my family was at church because they were all a part of service and they were doing things and they couldn't get out of it. So I was like, okay, I'll be fine here for an hour. They got me up right before they left for church. I, they got my feet up. And so my cousin got here about an hour later and then, um, and that was good. So at least three days, 24 seven support, but really honestly, you're gonna need someone with you for seven days. And the reason why I say that is because you're gonna wanna get up every two hours during the night. One, you wanna move your legs, which we'll talk about an, an, another thing in just a minute. So for me personally, I couldn't reach down on my recliner to, which I'll talk to you about in another second, um, to get out of the chair. So I needed someone to help lift the recliner up for me so I could get out and help me get out of the chair. So I had my mom stay with us. My mom stayed with us seven or eight nights because my husband gets up um, at the time of this video and he's been doing UPS preload in the morning. So he's been getting up in the middle of the night and he goes into work and he leaves the house at four, if not earlier. So I definitely needed someone with me to help me get up and out. My husband goes to bed super early. And so, I mean, to get up every two hours was just not feasible for him to help me with that. Number two, keep ahead of your pain meds, okay? Um, and this is gonna be, I'm gonna talk to you about the details of meds in my top items to have for tummy tuck. So that's gonna be a separate video. Keep ahead of meds. One thing though is I wish I would have started was I wish I would have started stool softeners a few days before the surgery. I think what I didn't have going for me as well is I had to start taking an iron supplement before my surgery, um, which I should have been on in the long run, but my iron was low or my hemoglobin was low, which probably means my iron was low. Um, my counts were really low. And so I was on the brinking point of them postponing my surgery, which I've talked in my other videos. So um, with the iron, you definitely want a stool softener going on. But what I say about keep ahead of meds is if you're taking um, 
your muscle relaxer every six hours, you can take it every five and a half to six. If you're taking your Norco or your codeine or you know your major painkiller, you can take that within 30 minutes of the next time. So if it's every six hours, you can take it at five and a half. And I wasn't doing that. And then I had a nurse friend of mine remind me, she goes, keep up on your meds. That means you can do 30 minutes in advance. And I was like, that totally makes sense. Cause she says your body needs to metabolize that meds. So by the time it metabolizes, it's been out of your system already 30 minutes to an hour, and then you are in pain. So when nurses say keep up on your meds, that's what they mean is keep ahead by 30 minutes of the time slot. In my next video though, where I talk to you about top items needed for a tummy tuck muscle repair journey, I will talk about all the supplements and pills and meds that I take and I recommend. Okay, number three, you're gonna wanna take off two to six weeks of work minimum. Now, the reason why I say two to six, some girls have gone back after a week. I um, was off for a week on medical and then the second week I worked from home and I did certain things from home, but my job is very easy to do that. I, I went back to church to lead worship at 17 days post-surgery and I had to sit. I'm a worship pastor, but I had to sit at the keyboard. I didn't stand, but by the next week I stood. Um, girls that do any lifting, standing for long periods of time or more um, laborious work, I would say you're going to need longer. Uh, at first, I didn't, wasn't taking stairs at my work. There's a lot of stairs. I was parking out at the top and then walking in. I did that for about a week. And then the, by the next week, I was pulling down below and walking up the stairs. So it just depends on what your job entitles. And so it, it really varies per person. Some ladies said for their job, they need to take off six weeks. For my job, you know, a week off and then a week working at home, which we end up needing to do because the office was getting remodeled. It worked out perfect. Um, but I've been fine getting back. However, I will say this, um, I have, I'm involved in a lot of different things and I'm exhausted. So by the time I'm done with my day job in the office, I'm wiped out. I can't do nothing. Um, even to talk to someone on the phone more than nine minutes is exhausting for me. And the first two weeks, it was like that. I couldn't even talk on the phone more than five minutes to 10 minutes, I'd get winded. And so you're gonna find that, that about yourself um, so don't do too much. I, I have like three jobs between um, the church, my wigs, uh, my health coaching, my YouTube channel. It's it's just a lot. And I've had to learn to pace things out. Um, some of my clients have called me and I've talked to them. Some of my clients I haven't talked to in a while. They've been on the program longer. So I haven't been able to connect with them as I typically would. But um, I mean it, I mean to, but honestly, by the time it's in the afternoon when I can make calls, I, I'm exhausted, like flat out exhausted. So I've been going to bed early every night, which I typically don't. I typically stay up and work. Most of the time I'm in bed now by nine, um, sometimes earlier, 9.30. Um, so listen to your body. Your body's gonna need time. So that's why I say two to six weeks off. Number four. Make sure to buy all your supplies before you have your tummy tuck. Easy as it sounds, we'll stay, like I said, I'll be doing a video on all the supplies that you need, so watch that video, but let's move on to number five. Number five, don't compare your progress and your swelling to other people. Other people's bodies heal differently than yours, and everybody has a different body, and I talk about this even in my health coaching is that your body was designed by God for you. It was not designed to be a clone of somebody else. So how your body responds to trauma and pain is gonna be very different than your next door neighbor, okay? So, and it depends on what you do. Swelling really can be determined by how much you do the day before, two days before. It could also be determined by the water intake you're eating or the food you're putting in your body. Um, but also know this, that every body is different. And I remember um, I, my doctor didn't want me wearing a compression garment for two weeks. I just had my drains in and sweats. And I felt like an Oompa Loompa. I felt like, like ridiculous. I felt depressed. I didn't understand why I was swelling. 
Now, compression garments, yes, has helped with the swelling, but the way my doctor did my procedure is he um, he does it a special, like, special way, and there are some doctors that are like this, and because of that um, technique they use, they don't want you putting compression on there because they're wanting blood flow to get to where it needs to go so the body heals correctly. So I couldn't really judge my, um, my look then because it was very different from other people because they were wearing compression garments or you know my um body type is different i learned that i have a short torso um i learned that i have an hourglass figure so it just i learned that i have actually wide rib cage a wide long rib cage and a short torso which is weird so i have this area that i've always had but it kind of wants to stick out and then go in right in here where it looks like, oh my goodness, you have fat there. No, it's actually loose skin. The only way I could have gotten rid of that was to, I'm getting off topic, is to actually do a floral lease with a cut down the middle. And we just didn't really want to do that. Um, but honestly, I have a little bit of skin here, but he said it's mainly bone. It's, he says you have a wide rib cage. So, I have a wide rib cage with a short torso with an hourglass figure. So it's different. It's going to look different than somebody else. Um, don't judge and get discouraged on that. Okay. Number six, take pictures of your journey. I'm going to input here. I've taken one in several different times. Um, I think 11 days, 13 days, 20 days, 25 days, 28 days was like, what? The swelling was ridiculous. Um, I took another one at 35 days, so week five. Um, and there was different days along that journey where I was happy with my progress. There, there, most of those I was mad at my progress. So I had to make before and afters of what did my skin look like four days before surgery. Four days before surgery, I was very wrinkly. I had a very lot of loose skin because I lost so much weight. And then I realized, oh, wow, I do look good. So what's really important is take before photos, okay? Take before photos. You know, a lot of girls like do like this slanted, like hanging over with their skin hanging over. And then as you go along in your journey, take a take an after photo and, and make those side by sides to keep yourself encouraged that you are having progress. You might be swollen, you might be puffy, and you will be for at least four to six months. However, you don't have that loose skin you used to have. Number seven, self-care and mental health care. I have never really struggled with depression per se. I've had anxiety, I've had post-traumatic um, stress with anxiety and nerves and stuff like that. I wouldn't say depression, However, I had depression over my results, especially around day, I would say day 13 and 14 was the worst, 12, 13, and 14. It was pretty bad. And I talked about it in a couple other videos. You can go back and look at those. But do something for you and your self-care. Make sure you're taking your vitamins. Make sure you're taking supplements. Make sure you're eating the right foods. Take eating lots of protein. You want 60 or more grams of protein a day. Um, make sure you're getting that vitamin D, that vitamin C, um, a good collagen, a vitamin E, um, a vitamin A in your um, multivitamin. I take all those. I take a probiotic. My foods also have my vitamins in them but I'm just supplementing with those so I can make sure I'm getting plenty to allow my body to heal. Make sure you're drinking lots of water. I drink a gallon of water a day and it really helps. Make sure you're journaling or reading a book um, or spending time in prayer or meditation, however you prefer. Um, that just really helps. I turn on a lot of my Christian music um, or spa music when I'm getting a massage. I've had a friend come over and do lymphatic massages, so that's part of self-care I wanna talk about, is plan on getting lymphatic massages. It's gonna help relieve 
Um, after your surgery, they release the toxins and trauma. Some people start right away. Ask your doctor when it's okay for you. I started my first one at week three just because of her schedule and my schedule. I didn't want to start till after the drains were removed and that was at two weeks. And then because of scheduling, it just ended up being at three weeks when I had my first massage. Um, and I've had three now and they feel so amazing. She actually comes to my house, but if you can go to a spa, that's great. Um, but those are very important. You just want to take care of you, take care of your investment. Um, at week four, he said I could start going on walks. So this week I've actually gone on two, uh, two days I walked one day I did two walks. Um, the first day was very slow. Uh, I live in very heel, na healy neighborhood. And uh, the second one I could tell I was, I could walk a little bit faster, but I did two separate walks and I probably at least did a mile and a half that day, if not more. Um, but it just felt so good to get into some sunshine. I put in some earbuds and listen to some music. Um, just take care of you, take some quiet time and take it easy too. Don't push yourself too much because you will feel it. That day I definitely felt it. By the evening I could not get off the couch <laughs> or I was limping very much hunched over. So still take it easy, but just do something that makes you um, feel like you and makes you feel happy and can really work on self-care during this season because it's a hard process and a hard realization and you have to have patience. Um, you know, my weight loss journey wasn't a snap of a finger. And a lot of times I think we think that tummy tuck is a snap of a finger because it's removing all this loose skin that you've had. And uh, for me, I had to realize I didn't lose the weight fast. And yes, the, the skin was all cut off fast, but the healing process and the trauma done to my body is a slow process. And so for that, it's a mental game. It's really a mental and a mindset game. So you have to have mindset and I'm and preaching to the choir. There's still days I'm like, oh. but finally in week five, I'm getting a lot happier and I'm realizing and I'm enjoying the journey and the process. Okay, number eight, keep the drains in the full amount of time your doctor recommends. Um, and this was recommended actually by one of um, my Tummy Tuck sisters in our March Tummy Tuck group, our March 2021 group. We have a Facebook group. And I kind of asked in there, you know, some things that people recommended. And some of these I already had on my list and then they were giving me their opinions as well. But this one was a good one and I wrote this down and it said, keep your drains in the full amount your doctor recommends. Don't try to rush those babies out. And the reason why is you, those are gonna help get those extra toxins and fluids out of your body. And sometimes girls will get them removed too soon and they start to have fluid buildup and they have to get it removed with the syringe. You can only imagine. I had my drains in for 15 days and I probably could have had them removed at probably day nine, if not a little earlier. But it allowed, I think, my body to really fully drain those extra fluids. Drinking lots of water and then the lymphatic massages have really helped. So, but definitely don't be quick to remove those drains. They're doing what they need to do. Trust your doctor and um, know that it's gonna be worth it in the end. Okay, number nine. So communicate with your doctor of what you want your incision to look like, what you want your belly button to look like, what you're wanting your figure to look like. Let them know what you're looking for. Is it possible for your body type? Can your incision be where you want it to be? I didn't really care about the incision per se, and maybe I should have a little bit more. I have just one little area where it drops down, but honestly, I had had a C-section, um, and two C-sections, and then I've always had fat covering it, so it wasn't a big deal for me. Mine is actually low enough, and I'll have to do, um, I, I'll maybe post a picture here, but it, it's low enough where my underwear cover it, bathing suit would cover it, so no big deal to me. I'm just shocked I'm flat. Mm -hmm. So I'm totally happy with being flat. I've never been flat before. So I am completely happy where, where it's at, and um, I think I'm, a, I think he went, a little bit longer on this side than this side, about an inch. Um, can't even tell though. I'm already healing up very nicely, which I'll talk to you about um, of how I'm healing up. But ask questions to your doctor. I had a list of questions in my notes when my mom and my husband went with me into 
my initial visit and then when I went in again with my husband to my pre-op I had a list of questions on my phone and I was like okay this okay mm -hmm. how long before this okay um you know what I mean like when can I lift okay mm -hmm. um and so that's just me and that's was like my mom she's like you want to have your questions so you just want to get an idea of what your doctor is recommending for you the process time the healing time the recovery what does it look like what do they recommend um and so you kind of have an idea of what it's going to look like i might not say this word right number 10 expirel shot i don't i i i'm probably butchering that don't judge i didn't have it done it is a $500 shot. I actually asked my doctor, hey, do you give out the Expirel shot or Expirel? And he's like, oh yeah, that's expensive. You don't need it. <laughs> and I was like, I don't need it. I hear it keeps me, like I was like, I hear it keeps me out of pain for three days. And he's like, yeah, it's $500. It's really expensive. You don't need it. You'll have pain meds. So I was like, okay. Like most doctors are like, hey, you're getting it. We're adding it to your bill. You're gonna get it. So I know some girls that love it. I know a few girls that have gotten it and still had pain on day two, like horrible. And I'm like, didn't you get the shot? Like, shouldn't you not be in pain? Like day two and three, if you got that shot, but they still were in a lot of pain. So it makes me think that like, honestly, I don't regret not getting it because I don't know what it would feel like with it. Um, I feel like what I've seen from others, at least like this one friend of mine, she paid for it and still had pain day two and three, like really bad. I had pain day two and three. So I don't know, it's up to you. I didn't get it. I don't think it's worth it. Um, now, if maybe that person like d just didn't react well to it or didn't get the full amount, who knows? Some girls are like, oh my gosh, it's everything. I can't feel a thing for three days. Great. Um, but you just want to make sure it's going to do what it's going to do. If not, honestly, pain meds and muscle relaxers were great for me. Um, it was hard. Main thing was making sure I was getting up every two hours and compression. Um, you're going to want to have compression, which I'm going to talk to you about um, in the top items to have. But compression and getting up and walking every two hours is very important. So um, honestly, I did well with just my Norco and my muscle relaxers. I was doing really well on that. So I don't think I had like any amount of pain that anybody else didn't have, if that makes sense. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of the top 10 things you need to know before you have a tummy tuck, a muscle relaxer. I hope they were educational for you. If you have any more questions, leave a question down below in the comments and I will answer it and get you an answer to your specific question. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love to have your support. Click the subscribe button. I'm also on Instagram under Wigging with Christy. I typically do a lot of wig reviews on my channel, but I'm starting to try to do more on my tummy tuck journey. I think a lot of people are enjoying that as well. And so I wanna still keep this a part of my channel, but mainly my channel is for wigs, wig education, hair education alternative, hair education for my alopecia areata. Hope you guys have a great day. Don't forget to shine bright, love others, and be kind. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.